How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Just Jared Gaming. My name is in fact Just Jared, but you guys can just call me Jared. Welcome back to another The Surge video. Now The Surge releases in four days. Four days The Surge will be out. We're going to talk about the loot in The Surge and kind of get in depth and look at some of the loot that um, Deck 13 has shown off through Twitter. And I'm also going to be giving you guys some other information really quick. Now, first things first, if you pre-order The Surge, you get three extra in-game bonuses. Those bonuses being, one, the Creo PSOI Limited Rig. You also get the mechanized counterweight V09 implant, version 9 implant, I'm assuming, which is a physical damage boost injectable. And three, a dowsing OS proximity sensor add on implant, which is a secret finding implant, which I'm assuming is some kind of implant or it gives you some kind of notification when there's a secret nearby. Awesome stuff. So those are the in-game bonuses you get when you pre-order The Surge. Now you only have a few days left to do that. I've pre-ordered my copy for the PS4. Now The Surge is releasing, like I said, on May 16th and it is releasing for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Now let's get into some of The Surge's loot. Now at the end of the video, I'm actually going to talk about how you can win the official steelbook for The Surge. Me, myself, I love steelbooks, so I hope I win this, but I do want to share the information to you guys, so we'll talk about it at the end. It looks freaking fantastic. So we're going to be taking a look at some of the loot in The Surge. Now, remember that in The Surge, there is a target loot and equip mechanic. Basically, that means any item your enemy is wielding, you can potentially rip it off of them take it for yourselves, and then craft it back at the med bay, which are kind of like the campfires in the Souls games. So, if you want an item that your enemy has, you can literally tear it off of them. It takes a little bit more work, but you can tear it off of them, and then go craft it for yourself. Any of these items I'm showing you guys that we're looking at today, that can be done. So let's get into it. So first off, we have the Fenris A7. Provided by one of Creo's first supply partners, the Fenris A7 Emergency Axe delivers superb cutting, splitting, and prying power. Wielded in one hand or two, its finely balanced design ensures easily delivery of maximum kinetic impact wherever you need it most. So this is probably my favorite weapons that we've actually get to see so far. There is a diverse like look to every single weapon in this game, and you'll see that as we go further in these diagrams. Next up we have the Power Grip, which the description reads, Kling's premier product, the Power Grip is actually a cunning multi-tool. Not only does it possess remarkable crush strength with fully customizable dimensional tolerances, Creo employees can also use it to cut, reshape, and pry open reinforced metallic surfaces. Its internal hydraulics use high density eutectic fluids which increase the tool's weight but grant it remarkable pressure tolerances. Then we have the Pax Imperator. An arm mounted section of the Pacification Automaton, X's power blade weapon, refit for use at a human scale. Even scaled down, it retains formidable mass and can deliver devastating blows. The power couplings of its energized blade have been somewhat damaged by concussive rocket explosions, but still retain most functionality. Now, this is a weapon from the PAX, which is, I do believe, the first boss. I could be mistaken. Um, it was at least the boss in the demo a long time ago. So, PAX Imper Imperator is the weapon you can actually rip from the boss. Now it says it uh, has been damaged by concussive rocket explosion. That's because in the boss fight, you actually shoot or the boss gets hit by the own missiles that it shoots out, things like that. So awesome stuff. There's a boss weapon that you can actually rip off of one of the bosses in the surge. Next is a Spitfire Rod. Claimed from the broken chassis of the rocket assembly platform Big Sister 1-3, I'm assuming might be another boss, who knows. The Creo safety manual for the big sister platform clearly states that they are hard coded to immediately cease operation in the case of human presence in the work area, but contains no suggestion actions for what to do if a big sister fails to autom automatically pause construction. No idea what that means moving on, but it looks dope. Now this freaking looks crazy. Mimetic Edge, sculpted from an unknown alloy of high stress metals by the ever evolving cognition at the heart of the nucleus. I have no idea what that means. 
Functioning nanites are embedded throughout the blade, constantly honing its cutting edge and adjusting its weight distribution to fit the movements of its wielder. The mimetic edge is a killing tool with singular purpose, sometimes even anticipating the next strike before it is performed. Dot, dot, dot. Who knows what that means? That dot, 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 I'm assuming is Deck 13 kind of being like, hey, this is a dope ass weapon. You need to look out for this because it has some cool powers. I can't wait to find it. The Inducer, Creo's own Don Hackett says it's best. Designed for critical power loss, an operator can use the Inducer to instantly transfer energy to a failing system or unit, completely recharging it. This is essential in Creo's space operations where even electrical fluctuations can lead to death or injury within seconds. If you can imagine it, Creo can design it. The Valkyrie. A classified next generation external manipulator developed by the Restricted Projects Laboratory under the supervision of Dr. Gene Barrett. Valkyrie is an improvement on a standard heavy duty cable cutter and is intended to be paired with Proteus gear modules. Now, while Proteus is meant to act as an external life support system, these claws have been sharpened to a dangerous combat ready level. Now, the Proteus, I do believe, is a gear set, so maybe these are kind of to be used with the Proteus set to give you more set bonuses. Who knows if set bonuses are in the game? I'm sure they are, actually. Um, there's actually different armor sets that you can get from ripping each piece off of your enemy, so that's a weapon that kind of goes with those, so that's cool. The Lynx. Now, the Lynx gear is third generation Creo Exo Rig technology customized to suit the evolving needs of your field technicians. Its lightweight construction and ease of use guarantees unparalleled flexibility, micro laminated alloy surfaces, and modest core power requirements make for a versatile set of gear suited to many challenging tasks of machinery enhancements. So, here we are actually looking at a full set of gear the Lynx armor set. Now, the Titan. Claimed from the broken chassis of the rocket assembly platform Big Sister 1-3, the Spitfire Rod's wielding torch has been damaged beyond repair. The Creo safety manual for the Big Sister platforms clearly states that immediately cease operation in the case of human presence. If we already read this on another description, look at that. I just realized. Anyways, moving on, this actually is my favorite weapon that I saw in gameplay um, way back when, when I started covering the game. It looks massive, it looks awesome, and it looks devastating. I want to wield this two-handed giant axe mace thing. Next up, the MG Legionnaire. The MG Legionnaire is not part of the standard equipment kit for Creo Security, but is rather designed as a trump card <laughs> in case of the worst were to happen. Invasion of the facility by an outside paramilitary force with an arrowhead form factor and two-sided energized cutting blades the legionnaire is guaranteed to easily cleave through reinforced plating the writing on these descriptions is fantastic holy cow next up the parsifal probably the most interesting looking weapon question mark i don't know parsifal is creo's patented nanite manipulation tool used internally for research purposes and not yet available for licensing or distribution. When connected to a configured nano manipulator array, it interprets schematics and exloads fabrication subroutines to local nanomatter, constructing new experimental technologies as fast as Creo's research scientists can design them. Oh my gosh, could you use bigger words? Next up, the Firebug. Now, the Firebug, I do believe, is a boss as well, so this must be from that boss. It's like a boss, it's like a drone with like eight legs or something. I don't know. The salvage throttle engine housing of the LU-74 unit Firebug is given its name due to its unusually large exhaust flames. Despite the best efforts of the Creo engineers leading lu 74s construction, they were never able to pinpoint a precise cause for the larger than normal flames. An explanatory note was entered into lu 74s service record, but lu 74 was neither the first nor the last Creo machine to develop idiosyncratic faults of a known provalence. Wow. Anyways, next on the list is MG Centurion. With the MG Centurion, Creo has transformed a military-grade anti-personal weapon into a dual-application industrial tool. Because its high-energy cutting blade can slice through common materials with ease, including flesh and bone, all employees who do not possess a personnel response force waiver must first pass a safety certification course before being granted access to a Centurion unit. Makes sense. 
Spectre Bite. Estir's Spectre Bite is the heavy duty answer to their Vibro Cutter model, with extreme cutting power and a mounted single rigged design to better handle its increased weight. The secret to its exceptional performance can be found in Estir's innovative plasma focusing nodes, which use local magnetic fields to contain and modulate the Spectre Bite's plasma beams. Now here we have something very interesting, uh, we'll get to it right after this, but first off we have the Yosuke Butterfly, and it says standard in green right there, Yosuke Butterfly, standard. A favorite tool of Creo employees often paired with Rhino gear, which we'll see in a second, the Butterfly is tougher than its name implies. Thanks to Yosuke, heavy operators have a tool that combines the power of a forklift with the flexibility of a trained craftsman. The Exo Rig does all the hard work, the operator only has to remember the three L's, look, lift, and load. Now if we move one more image over, we have Yosuke Butterfly Corrupted. Now I'm not sure what the corrupted means, how it gets corrupted, this might have something to do that ties in with the whole storyline, why all the Creo employees have gone mad, why they all look like zombies, why they all look like aliens, why there's like alien tech that you actually have to fight, who knows, but here is the corrupted version. But it has the same description, and Deck13 didn't give any insight when they put this on Twitter, so who knows. Now here's the Rhino gear that I was talking about a second ago. Heavy Task just got a whole lot lighter. Rhino Gear was the first generation of Creo Exo Rig technology built for exceptional power and durability in the face of extraordinary demands. Don't be fueled by its age, Rhino is still the backbone of Creo's mission to restore the environment, having paved the way for a more task specific gear to come. And that is it for the weapons and the armor sets that uh, the Surge have actually released. If you want to actually check these out, just go to the Surge's Twitter, official Twitter, and they have all these being posted um, all the time on there. I haven't done one of these in a while. I used to do every couple of them, then I took a long break from it. Now they've got like 20. That's why we just went over them just now. But I love the art design of this game. The weapons, everything looks sci-fi. Everything looks different. Nothing looks like a copy and paste weapon or things like that. They all have their own unique look, and I'm sure they're all going to have their own unique feel, which I can't wait to get into and actually try out now if you want to win a official steelbook for the surge what you want to do i'll link their twitter in the description go to their twitter follow them on twitter and retweet the tweet that they have that they recently put up about winning the official steelbook so just retweet the tweet and follow them on twitter and you're entered for a chance to win the surge official steelbook like i said i hope i win but i do want to share the information kind of get the word out about the surge more so you can go follow them on twitter retweet that tweet and i hope you all the best to win that steelbook anyways guys that is it for me i will have the surge coverage once the game comes out we'll be talking about it a lot on the channel because i am buying it i did pre-order it i cannot wait my loot fix i need it i need all that loot so it's gonna be fun i can't wait i got the day off it's gonna be great anyways guys if you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a thumbs up for me and subscribe for more of the surge coverage my name has been just jared i hope you guys have a fantastically awesome day until next time peace out